to take a couple of days off <laughs> and just do music, huh? Because I can, number one. And number two, I needed a break from making videos. So now we're going to get back on it. And we're going to look at the Avidya Pachaya Sutta. And uh, some of the questions that the Buddha's monks asked him when he was actually present in teaching at Savati. The Buddha said, with ignorance as condition, sankhara arise. With sankhara as condition, consciousness arises. With consciousness as condition, name and form arise. With name and form as condition, the six sense spheres arise. With the six sense spheres as condition, contact arises. With contact as condition, feeling arises. With feeling as condition, craving arises. With craving as condition, grasping arises. With grasping as condition, becoming arises. With becoming as condition, birth arises. With birth as condition arise decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Such is the arising of this entire mass of suffering. So, <laughs> you might get tired of hearing this. <laughs> I might get tired of reading it. But because it's so difficult, I don't know why. When I first heard of dependent origination, I was like, oh yeah, this is it. <laughs> and I jumped on it. I mean, I literally got on a plane and went to Thailand to study it. But most people, when they hear it, go, uh, duh, well, uh, what's that? <laughs> Clear the definitions of the terms. And hopefully it'll start to make more sense. And I'm going to discuss these questions that bring out a very, very important point. When he had said this, a certain bhikkhu said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, what now is aging and death, and for whom is there this aging and death? Not a valid question, the Blessed One replied. Bhikkhu, whether one says, what now is aging and death, and for whom is there this aging and death? Or whether one says, aging and death is one thing, the one for whom there is this aging and death is another, both these assertions are identical in meaning. They differ only in the phrasing. If there is the view, the soul and the body are the same, there is no living of the holy life. And if there is the view, the soul is one thing, the body is another, there is no living of the holy life. Without veering toward either of these extremes, the Tathagata teaches the Dhamma by the middle, with birth as condition, aging and death. So, this is a typical question. This is a very, you know, ordinary, uh, run-of-the-mill question by somebody who doesn't understand dependent origination. That, okay, there's this aging and death, you know, so what's that? <laughs> Why does that happen? Why does the body get old and die? Then, for whom is this aging and death? What is the person? What is the being? What is the life in this body? What is the consciousness in the body? And the Buddha says, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Your assumptions are wrong. You're assuming that the body is one thing, and the person in the body is another thing. The consciousness in the body, the life in the body, the being is another thing. This is called duality. <laughs> the assumption of duality is there in our language, it's in our culture. It goes very deep. And so the Buddha is, is he's cutting off the, the question and saying, no, this is not a valid question. The Buddha, to the Buddha, there are four kinds of questions. There are a question that deserves a categorical answer, yes or no. There's a question that deserves a more detailed answer, an explanation of the reasons behind it, and so on like that. 
that. And then there's the question which is uh, only rhetorical. It's not really a sincere question. Uh, and finally, there's the stupid question. <laughs> And each of these questions gets a different answer from the Buddha. You'll see if you read through the suttas. Uh, so, in this case, it's a stupid question. <laughs> and not a valid question, the Buddha says. Uh, he's much more refined than I am, so he doesn't say, stupid question, bhikkhu. <laughs> but it is a stupid question. Why? Because the whole idea of dependent origination is that one thing leads to another, cause and effect, like, a, like a, a row of falling dominoes. You, you tip the first one, and then tuk, 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 they all fall down. So as soon as ignorance arises, ignorance means a clinging, Ing ignorance means ego, ignorance means the desire to be an individual. As soon as this ignorance arises, then all the rest happen, like a machine. So with ignorance as a condition, <laughs> consciousness arises. I'm sorry, sankara arises. Sankara are the intentions to become something. Because of ignorance, one thinks, oh yeah, I'm an individual, duh. <laughs> I'm separate from the whole. Huh? I'm a unique being. I'm different. I'm special. <clears throat> no. No, no, no. <laughs> it's impossible. Because the whole is the whole. You can never really be separated from it. Just think for a minute, just, just even on the bodily platform. Without air, without water, without food, in fact, without, without the whole universe existing as a support, this body cannot exist. Isn't it? Just think about it for a minute. If you were suddenly to be transported to outer space, there's no air, you can't breathe, you're finished. So, try to understand. This body, even though it appears to be a, a unit and it walks around and does stuff and stuff, it's not really separate from the whole. It comes into being because of the whole and it exists dependent on the whole. So it's not really separate from the whole. And the same goes on with our mind, our petty little ego, <laughs> and all the stuff that we think of as I is not really separate from the whole. It's simply a consequence of the laws of nature that when a vortex springs up huh, because of some obstruction, remember we went over vortex theory? As soon as there's an obstruction, the flow is disturbed and it forms little whirlpools. So as soon as there's this obstruction of ego, <laughs> ego is a, an obstruction to the natural flow. Ego is someone saying, oh, everything's impermanent, dukkha, and not self. But I want to make something that is permanent and pleasurable and self. So you're going directly against the flow of nature against the flow of the whole. And then you wonder why there's troubles, huh? Why there's suffering? <laughs> why don't your plans work out the way you would like? Well, it's because you're trying to do something that is against the laws of nature. So what happens is that nature is wiser than we are, and nature has a contingency plan for people like us, <laughs> which is that it corrects you. It corrects you automatically. So anyway, the Buddha is answering this question by telling him it's not a valid question. 
There is no difference between the process of becoming and the being. The being is the process of becoming. The process of becoming is the being. There's no difference between the body and the soul. They are one thing. They appear to be separate, but they're actually not. But even that is not a correct view. The correct view is that this whole thing, this being, huh, this body, all of its activities and so on and so forth, arise through a process of becoming. That's the reality. There really isn't an individual being. See, there really isn't a separate body. Those are just illusions, appearances. The real thing is, from ignorance as condition, <laughs> sankara arises. From sankara as condition, consciousness arises, and so on and so forth. So as soon as we accept that, then we're in a position to undo it, to untie the knot. The knot that leads to existence, becoming and suffering and death. See, nobody wants to die, but we're going to have to. <laughs> it's part of the laws of nature. Why? Because what we have started is against the flow. The, it, it's against the whole style of existence. So because of that, whatever we create in this life, in this being, has to be finished somehow. There's no way around it. There is no eternal life. There is no Vaikuntha or heaven where one can live forever, huh? even as, as a slave to God or whatever, you know, whatever your idea is. It, it can't happen. And the reason it can't happen is because the idea of an individual is fundamentally against the reality of the whole. So the Buddha is correcting not only the question, but the assumptions behind it. Uh, you think you're an individual, and you think you and your body are two separate things. No, they're not. No. It's because of this ignorance that one thinks of oneself as an individual and clings to that. Then all the other stuff happens just as a consequence. Okay, that's the bad news. And the good news is, simply by undoing that clinging, by undoing that ignorance, by hearing from a realized being, you can stop the whole chain of cause and effect. And when this body runs out, the, when the results of all the previous causes are finished, when all the karma for this body, the prara of the karma, is used up, and the body falls down, you're free. Or actually, you can be free even before that. If you stop creating further causes for the arising of a body. See? What happens is that people get frustrated because they can't do what they want. And so they say, well, I'm going to uh, go to another place and make another body and in that body, I'll be able to do what I want. That is, if they're intelligent. <laughs> if they're stupid, they simply suffer. So the Buddha is saying, no, that is not the solution to the problem. Because every time you arise as a separate individual, you're going to suffer and die. There is no difference between you and this process of birth and death. You are samsara. You started it. You started all this trouble by trying to be an individual. So get over it. Just let go this individual ignorance and the rest will follow all by itself. Buddha Saranaya.